Good morning, church. Uh, from, uh, from health department, our health nugget, the topic is about vitamins and our health. Are you deficient of vitamin D? So we are going to find out. And before we do that, let us pray. Our Father might in heaven, we come before your presence, Lord, this wonderful Sabbath morning that you've given us. And Lord, as we have fed ourselves spiritually, and we are going to know more about our bodies, how we are supposed to take care of it, we invite your presence, Lord. May you walk with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So uh, our topic is uh, vitamins and our health, and uh, this is vitamin D. So the question is, are you deficient of it? Do you get time to go out there in the sun? Because this is uh, uh, in Genesis uh, day four, when God was creating the world, he created the moon, the stars, and uh, the sun, which was to give us light uh, during the day. But uh, as we have uh, come to discover, scientists are agreeing with God that this day, day four, the sun is very, very crucial to our bodies. So that's what we are going to see today. And uh, uh, the question is, what is vitamin D? What is vitamin D? We say it's a fat soluble vitamin. What does that mean? Vitamin D, there are four of them which we call fat soluble vitamins. That is vitamin A, D, E, K. But today we are talking about vitamin D. Being a fat soluble vitamin, it means it requires oil or it requires fat for its absorption in the body. So, uh, the, the question is, uh, when it requires fat for absorption in the body, uh, that the sun has with fat, that's what we are going to see. So this nutrient, vitamin D, it is very essential for our lives. Eh? And uh, we can say also, vitamin D can act like a hormone produced by the kidney so that to levelize the amount of calcium in the blood, which is very vital for the development of uh, bones in our bodies. So the question is, are your bones strong? Now, vitamin D exists in two types. Eh? We have uh, vitamin D and vitamin 3. So the question is, where do we get vitamin D from? Where do we get vitamin 2 from? So, as we uh, go on, when we have the sun, the rays from the sun strikes the leaves, the plant paste leaves, eh? then what happens? Uh, these uh, rays convert vita vitamin D to D2. So, we say vitamin uh, vitamin uh, D2 is from plant-based uh, foods. Eh? Then vitamin uh, D3, which is you have to go outside there and get it from the sun. The rays from the sun converts them to D3. And we are going to see that the difference between D3 and D2 as we move on because the most important thing that we can get this D2 from plant proteins and also we can get D3 from exposure to the sun. So the question is, uh, my brothers and sisters, are you going out there to get enough sunlight so that you can convert your vitamin D3 to its form which can help you to, to suit you so that we can see the, 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 the consequences when you are missing this D3. So the most important thing is that uh, the most effective vitamins in our system is D3, which can help uh, to increase the concentration of D3 in the blood. So the D2, 
is not that bad, but it's also effective. But the most effective one is D3. So the question is, are you going out there to the sun to get enough uh, vitamin D3? So another thing, uh, when we have done that, you have known that D3 and, D and uh, D2 uh, is very important. The question comes, how do you know that you are deficient? The diagnosis of D3. I cannot just look at you and say, you are lacking vitamin D3, unless, or you are lacking vitamins, unless maybe we do a test in the lab. And when the tests are done in the labs, we are looking at the, the normals. Eh? They are normally done in the labs, blood is taken, and when we say you are deficient, the labs will show that when you have uh, a concentration of, uh, let's say, 50, 50 mil, uh, nanogram of uh, below, then we say you have a, a deficient. And then insufficient, it means you have from around 12 to 20 nano, uh, milligrams per liter, then we, when we say you have enough, it's from around 50 and above. So, and again, we can't say that vitamin D uh, is, can lead to toxicity. Remember, if you get it from the sun, it cannot lead to toxicity. But if you agree with me, most people nowadays are taking a lot of supplements, uh, a prescription of themselves. So this can lead to toxicity because when we say vitamin D is a, a fat soluble vitamin, it means it is stored in the, uh, in the body and more especially the organ we call the liver. So if a test is done and it's above 250 in adults, it means you have a toxicity of vitamin D. What are the functions now of vitamin D? Number one, we all know that the common one, it helps in the absorption of calcium, phosphorus from the intestine so that it goes to the blood to make your bones strong, to make your muscles strong, and to have a healthier body. But this vitamin D has received a very uh, uh, more emphasis and a lot of research is being done about it because we have seen more research which has been found that it improves our immunity. Remember during COVID, what happened? Most people who were being diagnosed to have COVID, as they were being tested, most of them, they were having a deficiency of vitamin D. So there's more research which needs to be done. If a child is getting more sicker most of the time, the immunity system is very low. It's good to know that uh, vitamin D can also be a contributing factor. Then we have also, uh, when we say that uh, it helps in uh, uh, bone health, but when you have a deficit of vitamin D, what happens? Uh, in children, you get rickets. In adults, there is osteomalacia. And now, as adults, we can say most people are walking around in painful joints uh, with the fatigue. You say, I didn't sleep well. So you don't know what is happening. The question you have to ask you, yourself, are you getting out there to the sun? Are you getting enough sunlight? Or you are just complaining, fatigue, pain, bone pain everywhere. You are complaining, but it could be you might be diagnosed to have osteomalacia, which is a very painful, we say your bones are very soft and uh, it leads to uh, muscle pain and even hip joint pain. Then uh, another function of vitamin D, it helps in, uh, in glucose metabolism. Uh, it makes the pita cells uh, work function and improves insulin resistance. Uh, this comes when you have a deficit of vitamin D, it means you are at risk of getting type 2 diabetes. So that's why uh, you should have to be very careful 
about uh, uh, the, the functions of vitamin D. Another function is it, uh, it's an antioxidant. What does it mean to be an antioxidant and also a neuropromoter? It makes our nerves very strong, and also being an antioxidant, it helps us to protect our, our body in free radicals, which can, uh, if uh, left to be on very high amount, it can lead to cancer. Uh, and some studies are going on because vitamin D has been associated with some certain types of cancer. And also, vitamin D can uh, lead to uh, elevated cholesterol. If you have a deficit of uh, vitamin D in your body, remember we have said you cannot be able to tell unless you check. And we are going to see what are these risk factors which make somebody to have a, a deficit of vitamin D. Number one, breastfeeding mothers, pregnancy, and even uh, infants uh, can have uh, a deficit of vitamin D if they are not exposed to the sunlight in the right way. And then people who are obese. Remember, when we talk about obese, you have extra muscles, extra fats, eh, and less muscles. So what happens? This amount of, uh, uh, if you are getting less of vitamin D, or if you are having deficiency, Chances of uh, getting obesity, and it, that you are at risk of getting, when you have obesity, it means you have a deficit of vitamin D. Those are the risk factors. And again, if you are eating, maybe there's the dietary uh, issues whereby we have diseases, which are like Crohn's disease, celiac disease, which affect our intestine. We have seen calcium is one of the, the, the mineral which helps in uh, absorption of pawns from the intestine. So the risks are so many uh, as we move on. Then the sources, what are the sources of them three? The most important thing uh, we need to consider here is going out to the sun. We have seen many people moving to urban areas and we don't have areas where we can go and bask, where we are working. There is a problem. We work the whole day and we don't have time to go to the sun. So this vitamin D has quoted a very important uh, uh, research. People are doing about it and it has been uh, related to so many uh, non-communicable diseases that we have seen, cancer, diabetes, it's so many, elevated cholesterol and also arthritis. So what I urge you, uh, my brothers and sisters, is remember to have time from around 10 to midday to go to the sun and pass so that you can have enough of vitamin D. So I think uh, I'll stop there and uh, from our health department uh, because uh, Gertrude's uh, uh, hospital has been uh, helping us, partnering with us during TMI. So from health department we are asking if you can come on 21st of May so that we can uh, work together with these children who have cancer and also support them where we can. Thank you so much and let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence. We want to thank you and want to appreciate you for the son that you gave us. And it's uh, with science that has been searched, we have seen that it's very important. And we have seen that when we have a deficiency of vitamin D, there are so many diseases, uh, uh, risk factors which are associated with the diseases that we have. Help us, Lord, to remember and work with us today for all the activities for the day. For this is my humble prayer. In Jesus' name I pray.